Hello everybody. Welcome back to more Botany Manor. Jumping back in from where I left off. Uh, I finally made my way upstairs. Searched the entire bathroom. We found the next place to build our um, plant our next seed. We just have to uh, figure out the rest of the clues and what the hot water and temperature has to do with everything. Clearly really likes hot water. Um, figure out what temperature now. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the one that likes to hold the eggs. Uh, yeah, there it is. Okay. So, let's just continue reading. Dear Lady Arabella, I wanted to thank you once again for your invaluable contributions during our recent Meadow Orchid Research Expedition. Your keen observations and deep knowledge of orchids was so helpful. Your dedication to the field is an inspiration to us all. I look forward to future collaborations and continued exploration of the botanical wonders that surround us. I will put in a good word for you at the Botanical Society. Most sincerely, Professor Montague. That is the attic. That's kind of upsetting. I mean, I know to get in you need three recommendations, but... Dude. You should really hate the woman. Health and safety warning. It has been brought to our attention that the factory of Barton Ironworks has been illegally dumping scrap metal in rivers across Somerset. These rivers are now polluted with rust, making them unsafe for swimming. Do not swim in the following rivers. River Cam, River Sommer, River Chew. The River Frome was also affected by the waste though. Oddly, the river is completely clear of rust pollution. We are still researching what led to that effect. Interesting. River swimming this season. We want to make sure we you can all enjoy swimming this summer, so we have cleared the most popular rivers in Somerset of all aquatic weeds. The River Cam and River Chu and the River Sommer have all been cleared of weeds thanks to the services of Clark's Aquatic Weed Removal Co. Thank you for your continued support. Thanks to monthly donations, the rivers of Somerset are clean and weed free. Can you make by point or subscription? To writing. Okay, river, river. Dearest Arabella, I am waiting, writing to share with you an exciting discovery I have made in the, my botanical studies. As it turns out, some plants are particularly sensitive to sound and seem to thrive when exposed to music or melodies from their natural environment. I hope to share more of my findings with you in the near future and would be delighted if you could join me in the, our research. Your sincere friend, Marianne. That's a lot of swoops. Do you see that letter? Oh, that's funny. Okay. Okay, so bridges. 25, 15, 20, 20, 10, 15, 5, and 10. Okay. So which river was it? Not that one. Um, this. Cam, Sommer, Chu, and Frome might be good. It is the warmest. So 25 it looks like. Twenty-five. Okay. I just need their seed. And their seed is in the attic. The attic should be over here. Okay, what's 
this. The flower growing company, gardening curiosities, trap moths. Sometimes a moth can be trapped inside a flower bud and it's, it, but it, but if it closes in the morning, the moth is then forced to use the flower's bud as a resting place until it opens again later. Some flowers only bloom for short periods during the year, so if the moth is unlucky, the flower bud won't open again until many months later. That's the night one. That's interesting. Moth spotting calendar. Okay. Moths of England. This is weird. Oh, rusty pig. The sites of plants. Some scientists have theorized that plants have photoreceptors in their leaves and stems, which allow them to see the color of light. This means that flowers can tell the time of day and know when, the, when to open or close their buds. The exact time that flowers bloom is different for each flower, but most of most do appear to respond to light and the color of the light in some way. Horticulturalists and botanists have made use of this knowledge to trick difficult flowers into blooming at any time like they like. Oh. Hmm. Hard to say which one that is. Okay. I am going to put this in the bathtub. Wrong way, wrong way. This is going in the bathtub. The brook chalice. Bam. Go back. 25 degrees. Oh yeah, look at that. I'm a jiggus. Whoa, look at that. That's cool. And does it eat? Do you think it eats the, the rust? It does. The brook chalice refers to grow, prefers to grow in rivers with a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. The plant naturally filters the water from rust and metal. Unfortunately, they get removed often as most people prefer their ponds to be weed free. That is upsetting. It's a nice flower. Okay, into the flower room with you. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. I feel like there was one in here. I am going to need those sunsets, though. I'm going to need them next, actually. Now we can continue 
exploring up here. Okay, what's this? Oh. Okay, cool. I feel like it's going to be this one. Sight of plants, yeah. Okay. My dear niece, I fear the window may be closing for you to find a suitable husband. I have arranged a dinner for you to meet my neighbor's son, Edward. He is successful in business in London. Your cousins, William and Thomas, may well aspire to become accomplished scientists, but for you, Arabella, it is better to make yourself useful in the small duties of life for which you will be loved and appreciated. Your studious nature will no doubt be valuable should you have a son, but it would f be foolish to al allow such a folly to come before the important things in life. I am confident this is what your parents would have wanted. Dinner will be at from 5 o'clock on Sunday. Remember to wear a becoming dress. Your yours very sincerely, Aunt Agnes. Sign of the time she missed out, or maybe she didn't even miss out. Maybe she just decided to focus on her studies, and she's trying to pursue her dream of getting her book published. Look at that. The Botanist Digest. This month is conservation with Professor Montague, leading expert in British metal orchids. In his words, every plant, every leaf, and every meadow holds secrets waiting to be unlocked. My aim is simply to uncover some of those mysteries. Professor John Montague, renowned botanist, sheds light on his groundbreaking work in his world of meadow orchids and other botanical wonders. With decades of research and numerous publications in his name, Professor Montague's contributions to the field have been nothing short of revolutionary, including discoveries of new species such as the Dactorlehiza Montague, or Hood Marsh Orchid. Ooh, wasn't that mine? Mm. Hard to say. Okay, so it's time to go back into that place and find the date of wrong way. I need to go to the library. Was it this one? No. This. 1830 to 1831. I've been trying to encourage the night for over a little month now. So if it's over a month, it has to be December. August, September, June. May, May, July, October. Eighteen thirty. Where did I say? For a little while now. For a little while now. Okay, let me 
chair. I mean, this says May. That's May, that's May. I'd go with this, I guess. Blue, yellow, pink, orange. Okay. Blue, yellow, pink, orange. Interesting. So let's look at the nightfall seed. I believe it's at the end of the hall. Bam. Bam. Nightfall. Bam. Okay, so it wasn't that. The other color that it could be is the other man, which is red, orange, yellow, pink. You're telling me it's not in... Oh, I'm not even paying attention to the other clues. So the fairy is definitely the garden tiger moth. I remember because I remember saying it looked like a ladybug. So the garden tiger moth. Garden. Gar oh, September. Are you serious? For some reason, oh, welcome to the stream. For some reason, I was just ignoring the the moth thing. September, blue, yellow, orange, red. Okay. Blue, yellow, orange, red. Beautiful. Wow, look at that flower. That is a beautiful flower. Seeing the nightfall bloom is a rare event. The flower only blooms with September sunsets. Night pollinators active 
in September, such as the Garden Tiger, often get trapped once the bud closes for the rest of the year. That's a shame that it only opens for a month. Because that is a beautiful flower. A lot of the flowers I've, I've made bloom are absolutely stunning. Start over here. Nice. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I should have nine. Four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> I am missing one flower. Not in here. Is it in here? Doesn't look like it, but I still got more puzzle to solve. Not down there. I'm missing a flower. Anyway, okay. Let's continue. The last place to check is up here. Sound. Bird calls. Home piano fort collection. Bird calls. Shoveler duck, blue heron, shilduck, pintail. Golden mallard, crested owl, silver magpie, red-billed uh, morin, teal, and tufted duck. Okay, so that's the last thing I need for this. Okay. So... Let's go get the, the seed. Okay. Cradle fern. I don't think I have to put the egg here. I have to mimic the egg that goes in it. So I know over here, that's tree diseases. Bird eggs. Is it this? No. Where's the bird stuff? I feel like it should be in here. Bird egg study, master bedroom, and then bell tower. Master bedroom. That's not the bell tower. Here it is. So the one with all the teardrops on it. That's what I thought, but I didn't want to not be sure. It is the crested owl. Okay. So the crested owl. E C D E G F E C D E G F 
Oh yeah. And it, wow. So that would just open and hold the eggs for the birds. The cradle fern is used to be uh, used by the crested owl as a nest, and this turn, and in turn, the plant has grown dependent on the owl's chime-like call to grow. Interesting. Nice. Ooh, another gatehouse delivery. Three left. Okay. Before I go back over there. some of these plants turned out to be. I still think this, uh... It's still my favorite flower, because it spins! It's so strange that the flower spins. Sorry, you can, um... There's an achievement that says recreate a flower three times. Kind of sad. Let's throw the flower in the bin, which is probably the trash. I don't know where a trash can is. Okay, the formal garden. Okay. Who has access to my house and it's not me? I really thought that last flower that had to be, like, we did in the bathtub, I really did think we were going to have to bring it over here. Because I thought we were going to use it um, here for where the, like, the water is because it's, like, river stuff. But clearly not. If you are enjoying, please definitely consider following. This is a super amazing, fun game. And the puzzles are really fun and creative. Like that door from the other side. A good thing I know how to get to the uh, formal garden. While I'm at it, I will locate the bin. The kitchen should have a trash can. There's seriously no trash can? How does this house not have a trash can? That is so strange. Unless it goes in the compost bin. Ah. 
I see. Okay. It's not really getting rid of it. It's just... What the heck happened to that thing? Yeah, here's the formal garden over here. And I got three seeds left. Climbing up. Another duck. This person really liked ducks. There's three new plants. Oh, what a lovely picnic. Illustrated penny paper. It was a message. Local man reports mysterious signal. A gentleman farmer has reported sightings of mysterious blinking lights coming from caves near his home in Cheddar. In his own words, I was walking my dog and lost track of time a little. It soon became dark and I decided to maybe to make a walk back home. On the way to my house is a tiny cave, and as I walked in, I noticed a blinking light pattern. Cast from the cave entrance, I was sure it was one of the, mo the Morse code messages. When I approached the cave, the light source vanished, and nobody was there. I'm convinced that what I saw was the Morse abbreviation for attention. I will never forget that one abbreviation, as it was the first message I learned in Morse code. Local authorities have assured our journalists that there have been no recent military activity or exercises in the area, so the mysterious remains unsolved. Oh no. Huh. It looks like I can go back there. Wow, this place is massive, but look at this place. It looks nice. Okay. The spring dance shrub. The flowering bush used to grow in gardens that have completely disappeared when I was off my travels. Okay. Next, let's go up here. Man, to, what would I do to have a house like this? Sincerest greetings. Dear Arabella, I was delighted after our recent mentoring session. You do excellent work as a fellow scholar of the natural world. I recall the spring dance shrub that once grew in your garden before you departed on your travels. How wonderful it would be to see it growing again. I have been compiling plant systems that require pollination to mature into their adult stage. I wonder if spring dance shrub is one of these plants. Ever your affectionate, affectionate friend, Lavinia. Interesting. Chemical compounds of wildflowers. Foxglove, flower, daffodil. Poppy. Opium. Yeah. Oh, what's that? Fool's emerald. Oh, it's there. Luciferin. The marvel of bioluminescence. In the darker corners of the world, there are plants and organisms that are able to produce their own light. These plants, fungi, and insects are most often found in areas of low light, such as dark forests, deep oceans, and gloomy caves. Recent discoveries show that chemicals such as luciferin are responsible for this glowing effect. It is not known what the glowing effect is used for, but it could be a, uh, for communication with others of the same species or to attract pollinators or food. Scientists believe there are many bioluminescent species waiting to be discovered. Okay. Fool's Emerald. That's the dining room. That's the photo room. And so that means somebody's house is bothering their cows. Mind your own business. Okay, next we'll go up here. There's nothing over here. Perfect, okay. The flower growing companion. Tips for growing hydrangeas. Hydrangeas are a beautiful flower that contain Antho anthocyanin, cyanin, which is a pigment that can change color depending on the pH level of the environment. The colors can be varied between red, purple, and blue. Cool. 
Goddard's gardening supplies. New materials for garden pots. Granite and terracotta. Sandstone, marble, and obsidian. Oh. Peat manure, guano, seaweed. Wood ash. Okay. Whoops. My sweet Hazel, are you keeping well today? Jimmy's only gone and broke the lawnmower again. If it weren't for my war injury, I wouldn't be letting him loose with the mower. He said he ran over some hard objects down in the long grass near the pond. I had a brief look and couldn't see anything. Sometimes I wonder about the boy's sensibilities. Have you... Have me some of your lovely scones. There's always Mr. Bennett. Communication. Over long distances, the messages... Communication over long distances must be selected according to the requirements of the scenario. If a message contains no sensitive information or there is no enemy presence within the communication area, an open method of communication such as tele telegraphy may be used. If open communication is permissible, both receivers may still benefit from the abbreviation of messages. See plate 2 for a table of commonly used military abbreviations used telegraphy and Morse code. Closed communication messages rely more on both technology and ingenuity in the case of secrecy and obfuscation. Planning is required and both parties must have knowledge of the method of encryption used. A brief history in long-range military communications. Ancient Greece, water telegraphy and torch telegraphy. Ancient Rome, smoke signaling. 16th century, beacons and pigeons. 18th century, marais shutter telegraph. 18th century radiated telegraph and then Morse code. Roger, over, out, wait, verified. Say again. Correction, attention, over and out. Interesting. Mr. Bennett, the telegraph you ordered arrived while you were at the farmer's market. They delivered it by boat. I left it at the boathouse since I didn't know where you'd like to keep it. There appears to be a Morse code manual inside the, the case as well, Jimmy. Ah. Oh. oh my gosh. Anthocyanins research. Okay, that's for the hydrangeas. Guano, manure, seaweed. Okay, so pH levels in certain things. Okay, so that's for hydrangeas as well. Uh -oh. I'm not looking for hydrangeas. Mr. Bennett, thank you so much for the lovely bunch of rhubarb from your nephew's garden. It needn't have, he needn't have sent anything in return for the herbal poultice I gave him for his little one, but I am grateful for all the same. I know he hasn't the money to fetch the doctor, since you said he cannot read a note. Please send him my thanks when you see him. Faithfully yours, Hazel. Mix seeds for garden bird prepared by Preetward Farmstead. Highly quality, hygienically blended. Attract the host of garden birds such as bluebirds, finches, robins, and warblers with the seed prepared at the highest quality level. Simply spread the seeds in the appropriate bird table or feeding surface and observe the delight of your feathered garden's neighbors. Attracting birds with color. Just like bees, birds can pollinate flowers. But did you know that birds have a preference to pollinate flowers of certain colors? The above chart uh, 
shows which color of flowers attract birds to your garden. Okay, it is all starting to make sense. So, hydrangeas, pot catalog, soil pH, bird seeds, bird posters, and pigment research. Yes. Okay, so I gotta turn, I gotta use a specific pot to turn it into a specific color. So I need to go see which color this bird is. And somehow lead it all the way over there. Red, white, red head, black body, white stomach. Okay, okay. It's a robin. So it likes pink, red. It likes red flowers. Okay. So it likes red flowers. Where did I find that stuff? Here it is. Red flowers need a 12 or 14? Dang. Okay, so 12. So it has to be sandstone with seaweed. Okay, sandstone with seaweed. Sandstone. Sandstone with seaweed. Bam. So now it's red. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so next, it is time to lead that bird all the way over here, carefully. Okay, now will this one be able to see this 
way. Oh, no, they're right here. Bam. This is cool. I'm liking this a lot. The puzzles are just so... F they're, they're, they are actually really fun. Okay. Back it up. Yeah, birds are very good pollinators, but uh, bees and butterflies are a lot better. That's why bees uh, are so important. What is that? Oh, something down there. Okay. Almost there. I still might have to go around. I don't want it flying all the way back to its tree. Bam. And... Bam! Pollinated it. Thank you, bird. Look at that, that's a beautiful flower. Oh wow. Look at all of them. Beautiful. Okay, spring dance shrub. The spring dance shrub contains anthocyanins, caused in, causing it to change color depending on the pH level of the environment. Robins love red flowers and will be attracted to the red variant of the shrub. That is a very pretty flower, I gotta say. Okay. I can bring this to the flower room. Wrong way. I only got two flowers left and I don't really know what happens after that. Do I get my book published? I, I truly hope so. This lady deserves it. Lovely flower. Like this is... For discovering all of this and all these people are like, eh, I'm not really quite sure. Nobody knows. Uh, this is a woman's... Uh, a man's job. Women only do gardening for fun. Whatever. Okay, time to go down here. And the table thing is that. This is just a nice. This is such a nice place. We're probably in Italy. Or, no, we have to be in London. I don't know. My dearest cousin, whilst I hold a deep fascination for the pursuit of knowledge of science, I must admit that the subject of spiritualism is not one that particularly captivates me. Therefore, I must return this book to you. However, I appreciate your efforts in sharing your interest with me. With affection, Arabella. The Will of Wisp. The Will of Wisp is an eerie apparition that has long been a subject of both fear and fascination. It makes its appearance to lost travelers in dark, isolated places and beckons them to follow with a bewildering, blinking light. Many a wanderer have followed the wisp's alluring light across marshes or into caves, never to be seen again. Take heed. Those who venture into dark places resist the temptation of Will of Wisp's shimmering radiance. Turn back before it's too late. Interesting. You tell me he didn't see this get run over. This thing goes to the. Fa how did this even get down there? It had it was a long though. I mean, I guess it's good that it didn't break. <laughs> I swim? I want to swim. Oh yeah. Frogger. Find a way to cross the pond. Oh, dang, it's dark in here. Okay, so one of them needs darkness, I guess. 
And lily pads support a grown human. Good question. Okay. So let's see this over here. Wow, look at that. Unfinished painting. That that looks amazing though. Inspect the Arabella's painting. I'm getting so many achievements, but look, that is amazing. Look at that. I wish I could paint like that. I can draw a little, but not paint. Okay. Boathouse. Do I have any more? Ah, uh, the bioluminescence. Funny thing is, I actually know Morse code. I, that's why I, lo I always love doing that step in Infinite Warfare Zombies where there's Morse code over the phone and you have to figure out what it says. Oh, where's that? Oh man, this place is a lot. Okay. How weeds spread. Weeds can take over an area quite rapidly. Some weeds have adapted in order to spread their seeds as far as possible. The plant itself does not have much control over this, but trusts nature to lend a helping hand. Wood avens and goosegrass have seeds with a hook designed to attach to the fur of passing animals. They are then carried and dropped up to several miles away. Dandelions have seeds attached to feathery puff that allows them to simply spread by carry by the wind to a faraway location. Other plants, such as lords and ladies, wrap their seeds in an attractive berry with birds consume and then later deposit, away, uh, later deposit as waste at great distances away. The final, more mysterious example is the seed of the ocelot. It is known to be picked up by critters who then take it back to their nest. As soon as the animal goes to sleep, the seed sprouts into, into bloom. It is not quite understood how the plant is able to detect when the creature is asleep. Probably the noise. William Foley, classroom desk with chairs, 10. Classroom notebooks, box 20, chalkboard. Ink, black, blue box, ink, red box, writing materials, display case, teaching desk. Dear Lady Arabella, thank you for your orders. As discussed, we will write again in the coming months to inform you of the delivery date for the school supplies. All the best, W. Foley. So she was trying to become a teacher. There we go. Fool's Emerald and the Ocelete. Perfect. Edison, stand of phonograph. Whoops. Echo all over the world. Talking machine. Whoa. Animal husbandry and rehabilitation. Animals' heartbeat rates. Is that... It's the heartbeat? Awake asleep. Cow, horse, sheep. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. So that's what it is. Animal heartbeats. Weeds and seeds. I don't think it's the telegraph one. Okay, shuffle the food cards and place the stack face down in the center of the game board. Place the food tokens around the food cards and, the, and on the board. Place the animals at the start tile. Player choose their animal by rolling the dice. The highest roller chooses first. Take turns to roll the dice to move your animal along the woodland path. The highest roller goes first. If the land on the food tile. 
Pick up a food card. If your animal matches the card, you can collect the tokens specified by the food card. If you land on a gray squirrel tile, it steals all your food tokens and they must return to the board. The player who has the most food tokens in their nest at the end of the game is the winner. Woodland cards. Rabbit, wood mouse, red squirrels. Field cards, red squirrel, animal cards, hedgehog, mole. Meadow cards, rabbit, wood mouse, mole. Acorn. Rabbit. Rabbits live in many habitats and burrows underground. They come above ground to graze in the morning and the evening. Hedgehogs are protected from predators by their coats and needles. They live in burrows in both field and woodland habitats. The North American gray squirrel is larger than the red and will, and with smaller ears. It forages food but can only digest some seeds straight away. Moles live underground and have poor vision. They find food and mates using their sense of smell and touch. Wood mice are very small and live in woodlands, but also many other habitats including fields, parks, meadows, and gardens. Red squirrels live in nests high up in the trees and sometimes forage food back to the nest to keep for later, so it has to be a red squirrel. Okay, so it's a red squirrel. Okay, that's all of those. So I'm going to end it here, and in the next episode, we will finish the rest of the plants. we got to figure out exactly what the plants want, but... Um, Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, please consider following. If you want to see more of the rest of this, go to my YouTube channel, Spirit of Zombie. We'll see everything I've played before and including this. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. Good night.